when the Union Jack was lowered, Nigerians were full of optimism that their lives would dramatically improve. Now they will govern themselves. But after 60 years of freedom, most Nigerians still live in poverty and much of its oil wealth has been stolen or squandered. Some say that after 60 years, the country's biggest achievement is just surviving as a single state, despite deep splits of long ethnic and religious lines in Africa's most populous nations. With us to dissect Nigeria at 60, we have Comrade Okechuku Nwaguma, uh, the executive director of the Nigeria Police Reform Network. It's a pleasure to have you. It's my pleasure to uh, be on this program today. Uh, how we assess the president's address this morning? Well, as usual, as usual, the the president's um, address was um, full of the usual rhetoric without content, without direction, without any message of hope. Uh, it's the same, you know, um, usual, um, you know, uh, for, for, for me, you know, I think that this um, uh, address that the president gives every independence day is just like more of um, formality you know because i didn't see any thinking any a, any real thing that inspires hope in that um, uh, address except that uh, he tried to rehash what he considers his um, um, achievements in terms of um, the elections that happened in edo but of course, uh, they, he also highlighted some challenges, but didn't really, uh, didn't really um, show any direction in terms of how he intends to address those challenges, except that he takes the burden back to Nigerians, you know, we together. The same Nigerians that he expects to join him together to, you know, uh, deal with these challenges that he's not been able to deal with. And the same Nigerians that he has, subjected to hardship through the recent you know increase in uh, cost of fuel and uh, electricity in addition to the ongoing insecurity that has killed many nigerians in addition to the poverty that has characterized his government in addition to the fact that this government has you know done more in terms of exhibiting authoritarianism you know cracking down on free speech on free media, you know, um, we haven't really seen it as bad as this before in terms of repression. And uh, I wonder whether this is really democracy because for me, you know, freedom of expression, including dissent and free press are inseparable from democracy. But under this government, these basic freedoms have suffered more assaults than we have ever seen. Nigeria has never been as divided under this regime as it was before. So for me, I really do not see anything in that address that inspires hope and gives hope that any is, things are going to get better. There's really nothing to show that things are going to get better as far as I'm concerned. You mentioned yeah. a lot of issues. Um, especially I noted the fact that you, even in the presidential speech, he mentioned, used the word together severally. We're going to get back to that. But one of the issues you also highlighted had to do with the president's, uh, uh, one of the challenges that the government has to face in recent time was his uh, uh, addressing the, the, the challenges with regards to the recent fuel price hike. In fact, he came out to defend the, uh, the recent price hike, uh, saying that the responsible government must face realities and take tough decisions. Uh, what do you see to the president uh, uh, supporting uh, the price increment at this point in time, with respect to even going as far as uh, comparing Nigerians to other neighboring countries. I mean, uh, is it not hardening further burdens on Nigerians? And is the price increment justified at this time? You know, I found that very laughable because when, if this government really wanted to do a comparison, uh, between this country and other countries. I think he needed to go the whole hog. Um, he showed the price of petrol, you know, in other countries comp in, comp in, comp in comparison to N Nigeria. 
and then said that he didn't see any sense in in uh, fuel, you know, costing more in um, Saudi Arabia than uh, than in Nigeria. But the question also is, yes, there have been. I mean, the problem with you know uh, um, uh, petroleum and electricity uh, it didn't start with this, you know, government. But unfortunately, we have not seen any serious thing. Because you remember that when this president was campaigning, he said that there was no, that there was no, um, in, in, you know, what is it Sub called now? That there was no, no subsidy. But today, he is here to apologize to us for coming back today to tell us that I even accused the previous government of in, in engaging in subsidy, you know, you know, you know, fraud and corruption. The same thing has happened. Now, how many refineries? As this government builds, how many other countries that is he's mentioning, you know, uh, 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 you know, export crude and imports the end product? How many of these countries that he mentioned give, um, you know, um, uh, oil blocks to politicians? And so the point we're making is that whereas we know that there is, I mean, that there is a, a, a general crisis across the globe, which affects cost of, you know, petroleum petro 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 products. But these other governments are not as irresponsible as this government is. This, these other governments are taking steps, verifiable steps to, you know, assuage the effects of these policies on, on, their, on their citizens. But this government is not even thinking in terms of how do we ameliorate the suffering? Of, of the people. Look at even the COVID, you know, situation. You see the efforts made by other countries to, you know, to, to provide palliatives for instances. Every day we hear this, this if, even in the statement, he said they have done much to, you know, provide palliatives. And you ask questions, who are the people that got these palliatives? So the point is not about making comparison in terms of the differences in, in cost of fuel, but Making also making comparison in terms of the policies that these other governments have have you know adopted to ensure that their the citizens do not suffer the the inevitable impact of the the increase in the cost of, of this things. You know, citizens I don't how many the the level of of you know poor poverty in this country is incomparable with any other any other place in the world. And I didn't hear the president also make a comparison between the level of poverty in this country and the level of poverty in, in other countries. So these are the things we want to hear. And what are you going to do to ensure that these measures that the government is, 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 is taking, which leads to more suffering, which, which deepens the misery of the average Nigeria, that they at least have some respite. And we didn't see that in the, in, in the statement. So that is quite unfortunate. As far as I'm concerned, Nigerians have, you know, it, Nigerians have no option than to take their um, destiny into their hand. We we fought for we fought for independence. We fought from co from co colonial rule. We fought for independence and liberation from over twenty nine years of military rule, which was costly. People lost their 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 lives. Today we are saddled with a corrupt civilian administration. Incompetent, you know that that prioritizes nepotism. Today we have been told that the the, the DSS is recruiting secretly, and out of the total number of persons being recruited, a certain part of the country is providing over eighty percent of the people to be. I mean that tells you the character of this government. So every institution in this government is taken after the head, who, who is known to be you know a, 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 a man that is not is that, you know his own ex exhibits nepotism without shame without pretense so as far as i'm concerned that you know address was just mere mere you know the normal thing that they, they want to do because they say that's liberty independence for me there's really nothing independent about this country and there's no content in that address Several times, the president also mentioned the need for unity, in fact, referring to the founding fathers uh, of the country uh, with regards to the foundation 
basis for unity. And uh, the, he mentioned several, used the word together, together, separately. But right from inception of this administration, President Muhammad Buhari has been dogged by accusations of sectionalism in his appointments. I mean, based on what you, you have just said. In fact, uh, it, 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 some have even uh, challenged it in court uh, that uh, it's uh, ethnically discriminatory and lopsided, which is a breach of uh, the federal character and uh, thus unconstitutional, illegal, and ultraviolet. So the question is, uh, how, what, how will you assess this president's uh, lopsided political appointments? You know, I mean, I just, I just uh, started by making reference to the, the ongoing recruitment by the DSS, and and and, and as, a, as a matter of fact, you know, it, it is, it, it, it is not, it, it is not something being done in the open. Just like we had the CBM sometime also carried out, you know, recruitment, secret recruitments, and hand picked children of 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 uh, privileged people in, in, in this country. Today we have seen the nature of appointments under this government. We saw for a, a, a example, the, the, there's one of these government's processes where they needed to, to replace somebody who, 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 who retired. And the name of a Sultana came up, and then the secret. Look at even. Let me even even take you to the appointment into the um, uh, uh, the 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 board of trustees of the police trust fund. You know, and that, that's just it, it. It just reflects across, filled up with people from one part of the the, the country, contrary to the provisions of the. The federal character. No go government has subverted that principle, that law of the that federal character that this government. And it keeps happening. The more Nigerians complain, the more this government behaves as if I don't care. It does not care about public, you know, um, what the people think about him. And as a matter of fact, I'm sure that our, our he has he has betrayed the founding fathers of this country. And I do not expect him to make a reference to the founding fathers of this country who made sacrifices. To ensure that this country is united, you cannot have a united country when you are your policies deliberately favors one part against the other, and you are talking about unity. You can't unite a country where you, you, you there is no you know no no level playing ground. Where people of where people from the the part, the part of the country where the, the the president comes from are the people who are benefiting from everything. To the detriment of others, we are people from people from other places agitating, agitating peacefully for equity. Are killed. Security agencies are, are, are sent after them, and they kill people who are not armed. I mean, this 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 cannot unite a country. It cannot unite this this is the most divisive president that Nigeria has ever had. And as long as he remains in office, this country cannot make progress. Interestingly, the president did not allude to the state of insecurity in the nation. He, the only thing close to that was the fact that he mentioned that institutions such as the police, the judiciary, the military all suffer from a general decline. Uh, why do you think the president did not look into the state of insecurity? Because that is one of the issues I mean, bedeviling this country at this moment. You would note that um, the three Cardinal, you know, um, uh, the, the, the three signature commitments of this president, both during his first term and the campaigns, you know, was basically security, anti-corruption, and the and economy. And of course, you know, unfortunately, the government before Buhari, you know, probably set the ground for this man to emerge. A, a lot of people were disappointed and you know, thought that a lot of people had this um, illusion that Buhari was the only one who had the will and the character to combat corruption headlong. And so that was why people were misled into voting him in the first time. But of course, you know what happened in the second term. You know how he emerged. He wasn't as popular as it was during the, the first term. And up to now, four years after, after four years, first time has gone, 
is six months into his second term. The state of security in this country has continued to worsen. And so he has nothing to say. Corruption, okay, today we, are, we know that a, a certain panel is investigating the, the suspended, the acting ch chairman of the EFCC. How, how, what, will that, what will that lead us to? Will that lead us to recovering stolen funds? Would that it, it lead us to sending people into, to, I mean, to prison to demonstrate, to send a clear message that corruption will not be condoned? So under this president who is fighting, fighting corruption, corruption has become the name of the game. Insecurity is at its worst. The economy is in shambles. So what has this government to say? So where you, where you could not, and when I'm talking about the judiciary, has there been any government who subverted the constitution for the first time by single-handedly removing the chief justice of, of, of the country against the law? Is there any government under whose regime, you know, the courts have become, you know, have, have become messy, messy to the extent that judgments are given, and you don't see the logic and legality of the judgments. Is you see this, the Supreme Court has become a theater of absurdity. So, and all this is happening under a regime that says it's fighting corruption. So the problem with the judiciary is also as a result of the determination by this regime to use the judiciary, you know, to, to, to achieve its ends. The, 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 this government locked up Shoore using the courts as excuse. The same courts granted him bail and the government refused to obey the same courts. So how can this president be telling us about judiciary and how police, they, they, they are the people causing all, all, the, all the problem for the judiciary. The, this government has held the, 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 the legislature under hostage, held the judiciary under hostage and are running this country as if it's, uh, it's as if Separation of powers does not matter as if rule of law has never been assaulted in under any regime as it is under this government. So I think this government should save us some sophistry. Uh, finally, uh, in all of these challenges, these failures and problems, uh, insecurity, uh, the electoral system, uh, 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 and so on. Can you highlight practicable solutions to Nigeria's avalanche of problems at this time? The election in Edo, they, they just concluded uh, um, Edo gubernatorial uh, uh, election, seem to have raised some hope that we can get it right with the elections. We saw a lot of improvement in terms of the way INEC managed that e election. But how sustainable is this? Uh, we are looking forward to the Ondo election to see whether this will, you know, play itself out again. And if this happens, it will it will mean that we have begun that you know move towards credible election. But beyond that, beyond that, I think that Nigerians need to be in control of. Government. It is the power belongs to the people. And as long as Nigerians do not let this government know that they are in office at their pleasure and that they can determine what happens and what does not happen, this government will continue to do whatever it likes. They can wake up tomorrow and decide that the, because I'm sure that the APC was surprised at the outcome of the, of the Edo election. It didn't happen because of their willingness to allow you know, elections to go the way it ought to go. So let's see what happens in Ondo. But all, all, in all, all in all, I think that our institutions need to be independent and strengthened. We can see the outcome of that with what happened with how Annette handled this. The police, we, ju we just had a new, a, the, 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 the act, the colonial act repealed and the new police act you know, enacted how far all the you know, agencies and the authorities that have a role to play in implementing that act are able, to, are able and willing to play that role will determine how far that law will be implemented and how far it will be able to change 
you know, the character of policing in, in this country. Because it is not enough just to make law. Yeah, it is a major achievement to have changed that law. We now have a better law compared with what we had. But how do we ensure that the law is implemented, that the police operate in ways that conform with the law, that respect human rights, that respect the rule of law, that the police acts as agents of the people to serve and protect, not agents or agents of any re regime, not as a tool of repression. As long as we're able to have an independent and democratic police, you know, then because you see the problem with democracy in every, in, in almost other in almost all the parts of the world is that the police plays a crucial role in sustaining democracy or undermining it. So we must also, as we are seeing improvements in INEC, we want to see improvements in the police, we want to see improvements in the judiciary. And it takes the operators within these sectors to determine that we can no longer be you know, under the apron string of a president. The, the, the judiciary ought to understand it is an independent arm of government that should not act at the pleasure of any, the only other arm of government. The same with the legislature. But again, it depends on the quality of persons. Even the process of appointing people into certain offices determine how independent and how effective they are. So in summary, my point is that for things to work, we must have strong and independent and effective institutions democratic institutions, whether it is parliament, whether it is police, whether it is the judiciary, as long as we have a president who has a free hand to act the way he likes without any consequence, then our democracy is imperial.